This CQP web tutorial looks at two aspects of the interface, namely the process for saving queries and then the uh, process for getting back to a query that you have previously saved. These are conveniently dealt with together. Uh, the saved queries option itself is here on the main menu, saved queries, um, but if I click on that now you will see uh, no saved queries were found. I don't have any saved queries, so I will show you how to save a query and then we'll come back to this screen and uh, look at what we can do once we do have a saved query. So if I go back to the standard query screen and I put in, um, uh, oh, what shall I do a query for? Uh, how about can as a modal verb? So the query hums away and we get 5,755 matches in a 2 million, 2 million plus word corpus. This is the BNC sampler, 1 million words of writing, 1 million words of speech. A um, bit more than 1 million in practice. If we want to save this query on the CQP web system so that we can return to it later, then the option that we use is save current set of hits. Now for a simple straightforward query that you've just done like can as model verb or some other simple query that you've entered in then it doesn't actually help you much to save the query because you could always just type in the query again and rerun it from scratch. However imagine that you've done a number of different things here to your query. Let's say that you've thinned it or that you've thinned it to collocations or something like that. In that case uh, you don't want to have to do all that work again to come back to the set of hits that you had previously. What you want to do is to be able to save that set of hits and that's what this function does. Save current set of hits or as we call it the save query function for short. You go to this screen and you have here uh, a simple box where you enter the save name for your query uh, and we can type it in, uh, uh, let's say saved can vm. It's best not to use spaces or anything like that. It's much easier if you just uh, use uh, standard uh, letters and numbers and underscore and save the query. We return to the concordance straight away you'll see. We don't uh, so that uh, if you want to then do any further analyses you can do. Now note that the query we saved is literally this. If we then go on to do something else to it such as thin it, uh, so let's say we thin it down to 200 instances, that doesn't affect the, the query that is saved. The version we saved was the previous version before we thinned it. The version after we thinned it, if we want to save this, then we've got to save again. Okay, So whatever you saved, it doesn't change then. It's the same, you know, the same query in the database saved for you to come back to. Uh, if you and if you want to uh, save the thinned version, then we could do that. We could say uh, we could call it uh, thinned version, and it's done. Note that if I go back and just to demonstrate what happens if you use if I used. Uh, if I'd used uh, hyphens there rather than underscores then I would have got an error message up here telling me that I can't use that name and so uh, if you remember to do it that way brilliant if not you'll get this error message that reminds you okay right so let me go back a couple of times and we're back to the uh, concordance, if I go to new query, so I'm back to the main menu, then if I now go to my saved queries setting, then you will see that I now have two saved queries, each one based on 
um, one of those two saves that I did. So there's saved can as VM, which if I click on it takes me back to the concordance. Uh, if I click on the thinned version, then it takes me back to the concordance and again the record up here will still have uh, an explanation of everything that has been done to this query. So whatever I did to this query before saving it, the explanation of it will be up there. Okay. But again, if I change this again, so for example if I thin it to 50, then that won't change what's on disk. Um, if I go back to the save query it'll still say 200, uh, no matter what else I do here. Okay. So that's the general principle of the save query function. It's what you save explicitly that is stored on disk in the database. Um, anything that you do without saving it will be lost. So it's basically like a, any kind of file on your computer in that way. If you make changes and don't resave, then the save will be lost. Let's go back to new query and explore some other things that you can do here. So these links under name, which is whatever you specified, takes you through to um, takes you through to the query. You also have a record, so you have the number of hits, uh, 200 and 500 and uh, 5,755. So that's just there for information. You also have the date when you originally saved it and that's uh, what they're sorted according to. Uh, so if I go back to it now. Note that this is the original save date, not the last access date. So I re-access that query, but it's not been moved to the top, it's not been promoted. So this is the original save date. It does not update um, according to when you last accessed. The two functions you have here are the rename function. So if you chose something odd here and you want to change it, uh, you can rename. So thinned version is not very informative so let's say uh, thinned can VM and that changes the name and then you have the delete function for getting rid of them note be careful here uh, it won't ask you if you're sure it'll just delete it like that and then delete that so that's put us back to where we were when we started uh, and that is the full functionality of the saved query uh, interface as well as the query saving control in the concordance screen. Uh, that's that for this tutorial. Uh, thank you for listening.